Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Before we talk about the conference committee report and what's contained in the conference committee report, I think we probably should just correct the record from one perspective. It's been mentioned by a number of members on the other side of the aisle through this two-day debate process that the public hasn't had a chance to view the particular concepts in this bill and that the Democratic members have not been aware of the negotiations in this process. It's a fact that almost to a T, each and every component to this bill has been contained in one of the other proposals that has been out there for public consumption over the last four years. The point to a conference committee is to merge the details of all those different proposals together into a bill for final passage. Secondly, our staff continuously over the last two months have kept the staff members of the Democratic caucus up to date on the negotiations day by day, week by week. How that information was disseminated to the members is an internal discussion for the Democratic caucus. On the contents of the bill, the conference committee report on House Bill 1950 is legislation that has been supported by numerous organizations across this Commonwealth. They support the legislation because they believe it's a reasonable compromise and a reasonable conclusion to the discussions of the last four years. Organizations that support this legislation include the Boroughs Association of Pennsylvania, the County Commissioners Association of Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Township Supervisors Association, the Conservation Districts Association, the Growing Greener Coalition and their 750 members, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the Pennsylvania Land Trust Association, the Natural Land Trust Association, the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy, and just this afternoon, the Pennsylvania Environmental Council issued a statement calling for its passage. Mr. Speaker, the conference committee report contains five key components. Number one, it contains an impact fee. An impact fee that over the next decade will bring $3 billion to our local communities across this Commonwealth to offset the impacts of the industry on our citizens. Second, it will enhance our environmental regulations. Enhancements that should have been done a long time ago, but will be done with the passage of this legislation. Enhancements like increasing the setbacks from streams by 200%. Increasing the setbacks from water wells by 150%. Increasing the setbacks from buildings by 150%. Implementing for the first time in the history of Pennsylvania a setback from a public water supply of 1,000 feet. Extending the rebuttable presumption for unconventional well operators by 150%, 1,000 feet to 2,500 feet, and extending the time frame from six months to 12 months requiring the inspection of erosion and sedimentation controls before drilling can occur on a well pad site. It will require that all inspection reports be posted online for the public to view, and it will require the disclosure of all the chemicals used in the drilling process. Number three, it preserves traditional zoning authority and local input into the regulatory process. That is why our local government organizations across this Commonwealth support this legislation. Number four, it increases the fines and penalties on bad actors by 100%. A 100% increase for the bad actors that may endanger our citizens or our environment through their actions. And fifth and finally, it dedicates over $1 billion over the next decade to environmental programs. Programs like the Environmental Stewardship Fund, AKA Growing Greener, programs like the Hazardous Sites Waste Cleanup Fund, and our local county conservation districts. Mr. Speaker, in summary, this bill contains an impact fee to take care of our local communities. It enhances environmental regula regulations and water protections. It preserves local input into regulations and zoning, increases fines and penalties on bad actors, and dedicates a billion dollars to environmental programs across this Commonwealth. Mr. Speaker, this is a fitting conclusion to a four-year discussion on the Marcellus Shell. 
And perhaps the statement by the Pennsylvania Environmental Council said it best when it comes to governing and getting the job done. The first paragraph to their statement this afternoon reads, the enemy of the good is the perfect. And while this legislation may not be perfect, the people of Pennsylvania are served by the passage of this bill now, as opposed to waiting another year or longer for stronger action. Mr. Speaker, this bill may not be perfect, but we've been waiting for perfect for four years. We've been waiting for perfect for four years. At some point, you have to stop talking about doing something. You have to stop talking about caring about local communities. You have to stop talking about caring about our environment. You have to stop talking about funding environmental programs. And you have to actually get about the business of doing something about it. Mr. Speaker, this legislation, this conference committee report, strikes an appropriate balance between this enormous economic opportunity and our great environmental responsibilities. I would ask for support for the conference committee report on House Bill 1950. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Question.